everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this daisy granny square dress for your American Girl doll. So let's just get straight into the video. So to make this dress you will be needing a size medium 4 weight yarn in 3 different colors. The ones that I'm using today are a big twist value yarn and the colors that I'm using are pale yellow which I'll be using for the center of the flowers and the granny squares. However you could use a different color if you want. And then the second color is white, which I'll be using for the petals of the flowers in the granny squares. But you can use a different color if you want. And then the final color I'll be using is forest green. And I'll be using this for the border around the flowers in the granny squares. And also for the two triangles at the top of the dress. But again, you can use a different color if you want to. The colors are really very easy to switch out in this dress. You can make it totally unique and use like different color petals on each granny square or stuff like that but I'm just going to be doing all of the granny squares the exact same but it's really very easy to customize if you would like to do something a little more unique. So you'll be needing two different sizes of hooks for this dress. You'll be needing a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook which will be used for the granny squares so that they're a little tighter and have less holes and then you'll be needing a 5 millimeter hook to create the triangles on top of the dress. And then you'll also be needing a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. The first thing we're going to do is create the granny squares for the bottom of the dress. The pattern that I'm using for the granny squares I'm making in this video are the daisy granny squares from the channel Just Be Crafty and I'll be showing you how to make them in this video but if you want a little bit of a more in-depth tutorial then you can check out the original video which I've linked in the description box down below. So you're going to start by just grabbing the yarn that you want to use to create the center of the flower minus yellow. And then you're going to make a magic loop with it. If you don't know how to make a magic loop, then you can just go ahead and check out the link to the video of the tutorial on how to do a magic loop that I have linked in the description box down below. Also make sure that you use your 3.5mm crochet hook to create the flower granny squares and not the 5mm hook. So once you have your magic loop ready to go, you're going to start by chaining one and then you're going to do eight single crochets into the magic loop. So once you have your 8 single crochets, you can just go ahead and tighten the magic loop a little bit more so that you're really close to the first stitches that you did. And then you're just going to take your hook and slip stitch into that very first single crochet that we did in the beginning of the row. Then you can just grab your scissors and cut a tail. And then pull through your loop to create a knot. So now you have finished the center of the flower and next we are going to be working on the petals. So to start doing the petals we're going to have to insert our yarn. So find that spot where we made the knot and finished off the yellow and go into the next stitch after that. And then just grab your petal color yarn, whatever color you're using to create the petals. And then just pull up a loop with that yarn, except you're going to be pulling it all the way through so that you have the end on the other side. And then you'll just tie a quick knot to secure it to make sure that the stitches do not come undone. Then once your yarn is secured onto the stitch, grab your crochet hook and insert it into that seam stitch and pull up a loop with the yarn connected to the ball and then you're going to chain two. And now we're going to be doing some cluster stitches for the petals and I will be showing you how to make them. So you're going to start by yarning over and going into the stitch and then pulling up a loop and then pulling through two loops like you're about to do a double crochet but instead of pulling through those last two loops you're going to yarn over again and go into that same stitch again and then pull up a loop and pull through your first two loops. So now you should have three loops on your hook and you're going to do it one more time. Yarn over and go into that same stitch and then yarn over and pull up a loop and pull through the first two loops. So now you should have four loops on your hook. 
and you're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops and that is all you have to do for the cluster stitch so now what you're going to do is chain two and then you're going to do the same thing into the next stitch so i'm going to be showing you one more time how to do the cluster stitch so you yarn over and go into the next stitch and then pull up a loop and then pull through the first two loops and then you should have two loops on your hook now you're going to yarn over again and go into the same stitch and pull up a loop and pull through the first two loops so now you should have three loops on your hook and you're going to do it one more time yarn over and go into the same stitch and then pull up a loop and then pull through the first two loops so now you should have four loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all four of them you can kind of think of it like starting to do a double crochet three times before actually going through and pulling through all of the loops on your hook if that makes any sense but then you'll just chain two again and then you're going to do one cluster stitch in each of the six remaining stitches of the row and after each one you're going to chain two before doing the next so i'm going to go ahead and do my stitches and i will meet you back here when i am done so that i can show you how we're going to finish off the petal row and how we're going to do the border row okay so now i am back and i have done my eight petals or cluster stitches you can see here and now i'm at the end of the row so what we're going to do to finish off this row is chain two after the last cluster stitch as we have done after every one so far but then instead of doing another cluster stitch you're going to slip stitch into that first chain two that we did before starting to do stitches into the row and so now you have finished off that second row so all you have to do is just cut a tail and pull through your loop to create a knot so now we are going to be doing the final row on the granny square it's going to be the border row so this will turn it into a square shape and complete the granny square so to start this row you're going to find where you just made that knot and finished off the second row and go into the chain two space next to that so we're going to be going into the chain two spaces for this final row and then you're going to grab your border color yarn mine is green and just pull up a loop in that chain two space but then you're going to pull the yarn all the way through so that the tail is on the other side and tie a knot just so that the yarn is secured onto the flower so then what you're going to do is you're just going to grab your hook and insert it into that same chain two space and pull up a loop and then chain five And then once you have chained five, you're going to do three double crochets into that same chain two space. So as you know, last in the last row, we did eight cluster stitches, which means that we chained two after eight stitches. So we have eight gaps to work into and we're going to need to have four corners in order to make this into a square. So every other gap is going to be used to make a corner stitch. And I'll show you how to do those. This very first stitch is actually, we're going to come back to it when we finish the row and turn it into a corner stitch. That's why we chained five because the first three are going to be used as a double crochet later on. But yeah, so anyways, the next one is going to be a side and then the space after that is going to be a corner so for the sides all you have to do is just double crochet three into the same chain two space and then for the corners what you're going to do is you're going to double crochet three into the next chain two space and then you're going to chain two and do three more double crochets into the same chain two space. So 
So as you can see, that chain two kind of acts as the corner, and having that will help us turn this round flower into a square granny square. But then all you're going to do is do three double crochets in the next chain two space, and three double crochets, chain two, and three more double crochets into the one after that. And you'll repeat that until you come to the last chain two space, which will be a side, so it'll only be three double crochets. So I'll meet you back here when I have reached the last chain two space so that I can show you how we're going to finish off this row. Okay, so now I am at the end of my row and I've just done my three double crochets in the last chain two space. So now, as you can see, we have one corner missing and that is the one that should be in the first chain two space. So we're going to be turning that into a corner. So you're going to yarn over and do two double crochets into that very first chain two space. And then because we need three double crochets plus a chain two, we're going to count up the first three chains that we have there and slip stitch into the third one up. Now we have that extra chain two to act as the one in between the three double crochets and that extra chain three to act as the third double crochet. So then you're just going to slip stitch into that chain two. I just like to do that because I think it makes it a little more secure. But then you can just cut a tail and pull through your loop to finish off your granny square. And this is what one finished granny square looks like. So in total, you're going to need 10 of these for the bottom of the dress, unless you would like your dress to be a little bit longer, then you'll need 15 because you'll have three rows of five instead of just two. My dress did end up very short, but I liked it like that. So yeah, anyways, I'm going to go make my nine other granny squares and I will meet you back here when I have them so I can show you what we're going to do next on this dress. Okay, so now I am back and I have my 10 daisy granny squares and next we are going to move on to making the triangles for the top of the dress. So you're going to start by grabbing your yarn and making a slip knot. And then you're going to grab your hook. For the triangles, you're going to want to use your 5mm hook, not the 3.5mm. And then you're going to put your hook through the loop and chain five. And then you're going to skip the first chain and do one single crochet in every other chain in the row. So when you're done doing your stitches, you should have a total of four single crochets in your row. Then when you finish that first row, you're just going to chain one and turn and do one single crochet in every stitch across. So you're basically just doing one single crochet right on top of the single crochets from the last row. So then here's where we're going to start to turn it into a triangle. As you can see, I have flipped my work so that the rows I've done are kind of facing vertically instead of horizontally as they normally would. And between those two rows that I've done, there's this little space. So I'm just going to go into that space with my hook and do three single crochets into it. This will end up being the tip of our triangle. And now we are looking at the bottom of the original chains that we made. So you can see that we worked on the top of the chains in our very first row of single crochets, but now we're looking at the bottom of them and there should be four chains that we can go into. So we're just going to go into those four spaces and do one single crochet into each of them, just like we were working on top of normal chains, except we're working on the bottom of the chains. And when you finish this row, you should have 11 stitches all together. Now for the next row, you're going to chain one and turn, and you're going to do one single crochet in each of the first five stitches.
and then you're going to do three single crochets in the next stitch. And you should have five stitches remaining in your row, so you're just going to do one single crochet in each of those five stitches. And when you're done with this row, you should have a total of 13 single crochets. Now for the final row, what you're going to do is you're going to chain one and turn. And then you're going to do one single crochet in each of the first six stitches in your row. And then you'll do three single crochets in the next stitch. And after that, you should have six stitches remaining in your row. So you're just going to do one single crochet in each of those six stitches. And when you're done with this row, you should have a total of 15 single crochets. Once you have done that, you have finished your triangle. So this is what it looks like and all you have to do is just cut a tail and pull through your loop to create a knot. Now you're going to repeat these exact same steps for your second triangle. And once you have that second triangle done, come back to this video so that I can show you what we're going to do next on this dress. Okay, so now I'm back and I have all of my pieces here with me. So I've got my 10 granny squares and my two triangles. And all of the pieces that we need for this dress are now finished. So now what we're going to do is start sewing in the ends. So as you can see, there are about six ends per granny square to sew in and two per triangle. So that's not too terrible, but the granny squares will take a lot of time. And I just want to sew in the ends before we start sewing all of the pieces together. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly use my tapestry needle to sew in all of these ends. And I will be back here when I'm done so I can show you how we're going to start sewing everything together. Okay, so now I am back and I've woven in all of the ends on all of my granny squares and on my two triangles as well. And so now we're going to get started with sewing all the pieces together. So first we're going to sew all the granny squares together to create the bottom part of the dress. So let's just get straight into that part. So we're going to be sewing the granny squares together individually like this. And we'll do it in two separate rows and then we'll have those rows connected and we'll sew down the middle to connect the entire thing like a skirt but yeah so let's just get started on the first row so i have one row of five and i'm just going to grab these first two granny squares here and i'm just going to place them together right sides facing in so that means the wrong sides are facing outwards you know it's the wrong side because these stitches are a little bit more puffy and that is where you should have woven in your ends so then I'm just threading my tapestry needle with some yarn. I'm using the yarn of my border color so that it blends in better. And you're just going to insert it into that chain two space on the right side of your two squares. And you're just going to tie a quick knot to secure it on there. But then you're just going to start doing the mattress stitch across the square so you're going to like go into one stitch on the front square and pull through and then you go through the same stitch on the other square and pull through i'm kind of out of the camera here but basically you're just doing the mattress stitch across these stitches all the way to the end of the row so that these two squares are joined together so i'm just going to finish joining these two squares together and then I'll come back to show you kind of the layout of what we're going to be doing to join the rest of the squares together. 
Okay, so I'm back and I've sewn all across the side of the squares to join them and I've already tied off the end. All I have to do is cut a tail and now we finish sewing our first two squares together. So we're going to repeat that exact same process for all of the rest of the squares in this row. So that will end up with five squares that are sewn together. And then we're going to repeat all of the exact same steps again for the next row. So then we'll have two rows of these granny squares all attached. So I'm going to go ahead and sew together my rows. And I'm going to meet you back here when I have done that so that I can show you how we're going to attach these two rows together to make one piece. Okay, so now I am back and I have sewn together my squares to create two rows of five. And this is what they look like. So now we are going to be putting these two rows together to create one piece for the bottom of the dress. So to do that, we're going to flip one of them over onto the other and make sure that you have the right sides facing together. So again, the puffier side and the side that you wove the ends into will be facing outwards because that is the bad side. And then you're just going to do the exact same thing that you did before. You're just going to thread your tapestry needle with some yarn and sew all across this entire row so that these two rows of five granny squares are completely connected. So I'm going to meet you back here once I have finished sewing together these two rows into one piece so that I can show you how we're going to attach on the triangles, which is what we'll be doing next after these two rows are joined into one. So now I am back and I finished sewing together these two rows. So now we have the bottom of the dress done and we're going to be putting on the triangles now so that it is turned into an actual dress. So you're going to start by flipping your piece over to the wrong side with the puffier stitches you can see. And you're want going to want to flip over your triangles to the wrong side too. You can see that the wrong side has puffier stitches, they're less flat and they don't look as neat. And then what you're going to do is count over to the third granny square over, which should be the middle one. And take one of your granny squares and figure out where the middle of that little yellow part of the flower is. And put the edge of the granny square on that part. And then move it up to the top. And then the other one will just go right next to it. So this is how you figure out where the triangles need to go because that is like the exact middle of the dress. But then just move that other one away for now and grab your tapestry needle that is threaded with some yarn and just start sewing the triangle onto the dress in the right placement. And once that first one is sewn on, you'll just grab the second one like this and just start doing the stitches into here instead of into the first one and go until the end of the triangle. And then after you've tied it off, you can just go ahead and cut a tail and you have finished attaching the triangles to the top of the dress. So we only have a little bit more sewing to do. We're going to have to attach the two sides together so that we it will be a circle shape and it'll be a full dress instead of just a rectangle. So you're going to want to make sure that before you do that, your dress is facing right side up and then you'll fold over the ends. So now it should be the wrong side facing up because you folded in the right side. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to grab your tapestry needle and just sew along that edge to join the two sides and make the dress round in the back so i'm just going to do that and meet you back here when i'm done so that i can show you what we're going to be doing next
Okay, so now I am back and the dress is now round and this is what it looks like, although this is the, the wrong side, so it'll look much better on the right side. But now we're going to be attaching these straps to tie it around your doll's neck and then we'll be weaving in the ends, but I wanted to attach the straps first because they will create some ends that we're going to need to weave in. So I thought we might as well just make them first and weave in all of the ends at the same time. So you're going to be flipping your dress so that is facing right sides outwards because we're going to be attaching the chains on the right side. And then you're just going to grab your 3.5 millimeter crochet hook because that is the hook that we're going to be using to make these straps. So you're going to grab your main color yarn and make a slip knot. And then go to the side of one of the triangles and count up eight stitches and the eighth stitch up is the middle stitch so it will be the one that we are doing the chains into but just insert your hook into that eighth stitch up and then put the slip knot on your loop and pull up a loop with that slip knot so now you've got a loop to work with and then you're just going to chain 30 with your yarn And when you have your 30 chains, you're just going to cut a tail with your scissors and pull through the loop on your hook to create a knot. And you want to make sure that that knot is pretty tight because now we're just going to be cutting off most of the tail but leaving a little of it so that the chains don't get unraveled. So then you're going to just repeat those exact same steps on the other side, you count up to the 8th stitch and then insert your hook into that 8th stitch up and then make a slip knot with your yarn. And pull up a loop through the slip knot with your hook. So now you have a loop to work with on your triangle and then you're just going to chain 30. and cut a tail with your scissors and then just pull through the loop on your hook to create a knot and then you can just go ahead and cut off most of that tail but leave a little bit of it so that the knot does not come unraveled so now we have our two straps that can tie around your doll's neck and all that is left to do on this dress is to flip it back to be inside out again and sew in all of these ends. So we have a lot of ends because of all of the stitching we did, like stitching all of the squares together and then sewing those two rows together and then all of that. So you're just going to grab your tapestry needle and weave in all of these ends for a nice clean finish on your dress. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And yeah, that is the last thing you have to do for this dress. So once you have woven in all of your ends, you are done. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it make sure to subscribe to my channel i really love this dress design because it's so easy to customize you could do like different color petals on each granny square or different color borders on each granny square or add an extra row of granny squares if the dress is a little too short for you or add a border at the bottom i don't know there are just so many things you can do to make this dress your own but yeah anyways i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you next time bye